Hey guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to teach you about Ansible, which is a configuration management and application deployment tool. After going through this tutorial, I promise you that the concept and understanding of the Ansible will be absolutely clear to you. Ansible series is divided into multiple parts. Therefore, subscribe to the channel and follow the playlist for complete understanding. But before we begin, let me inform you a few things about us. DevOps School is one of the leading platform which offers DevOps, Cloud and Containers Technology training and certification programs for freshers and established professionals who wish to update and consolidate their skills in the dynamic IT scenario. We ensure that the training solutions are delivered by highly experienced domain experts with practical working experience in various verticals. You can join our all training programs globally through online platforms and if you are looking for classroom workshop then we have regular batches available in Hyderabad and Bangalore. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info, link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. Okay guys, so let's get started. So today I'm going to talk about three topics, which is mainly which we are talking about. One is what is roles. Okay, that's one thing. What is roles? Second thing, how can I use the roles that's uh, from and civil forge the second questions that is we have with that are you sharing any screen uh, rajesh oh sorry can you see it now yeah so i can able to see yeah. yes yes yeah so I was talking about uh, what is the roles. This is what I'm talking about today. How can you use the roles and uh, using Ansible Force? And how can you set can you set the Ansible Tower? That is a question, right? Finish. Yes. So this is the three agenda which I'll talk about today. Uh, one thing which I want to give it a quick summary of uh, last session so you can understand in uh, in Ansible we have uh, what is Ansible so Ansible is a configuration management tool config management tool as part of the Ansible architecture what you have and civil architecture. architecture we have an civil control server and an civil remote server remote server in an civil control servers we must have inventory inventory file we must have playbook right so these are the two things which we have and then we run it and civil remote servers like that so this is the stuff which you have so we can have this is this can be many here whereas anti and civil control server is one now the question is here what is rules uh, Rajesh, before we go to that level, I have one basic question. Yeah, tell me. Uh, yeah, among the DevOps tools like Chef, Puppet, and uh, Ansible, and several others are there. Uh, since uh, the agent is not required to be installed in other, uh, in each and every uh, nodes, can we say at this point Ansible, Ansible is uh, the best compared to Chef, Puppet, and uh, several other tools? Okay, so this is conditional actually. When um, we say Ansible is agentless, but is it really agentless? No, it's not true actually. Yes, so uh, let me tell you, Ansible is designed by the RHEL. So yeah, it's good for the Linux, good for the Linux. But when it comes for the, it is the best. Uh, I would say it's very we need to discuss on this because uh, 
there are some pros and there are some cons uh, for this Ansible and whereas Puppet is powerful at some places also. Uh, the question is uh, Ansible is agentless which is true or not let me tell you. MS Paint. So M Ansible is basically have one control server this is control server and this is a remote server okay now we say ansible is agentless so using ssh during so SSH. control server you are meaning uh, meaning it by uh, the ansible uh, the software uh, which has been installed in the system correct uh, yes this is ansible software installed and from this machine you are raising the commands against this remote server okay fine yeah so the inventory uh, is what you mean by host correct yeah inventory is a host playbook is your program okay so now yeah yeah so now from the control server you execute the command in remote servers it can be multiple remote server also now this is done the connection is done by the ssh over the tcp now what happens this is ssh connection ssh tunnel this ssh tunnel is established and this will enable the sending the packet only if there is a python so if there is a python so if there is no python control server will not be able to connect with a remote server so here already python is there and then ansible is installed top of that in the all the remote servers you should be having python installed that is a prerequisite so yes we do not install any agent in this remote server and most of the Linux operating system comes with the Python 2.6 plus. So that way we can say uh, Ansible is agentless. But again, it's not exactly. It has a Python, it needs a Python to receive the SSH. Is that clear? Okay. So other than Python dependency, uh, we can say remaining, uh, there, is, there are no other dependency for the remote server. Which is not the case for uh, Chef, Puppet, etc. So in that way, I think agent, uh, what's it? Ansible is having an apparent, right? Yeah, Ansible is very matured. It's having lots of uh, modules are there, which is community driven, hard code Linux. Uh, Ansible is weak in Windows, whereas Puppet is very strong. So um, agentless wise, yes. Uh, Ansible is agentless in that perspective where you don't have to install any agent. It can manage any machines using SSH. So that's there. But yeah, when it comes for the comparison, uh, again, there's some pros, there are some cons, so and that's there. Ansible is leader and basically it's growing a lot actually. That's, that's there. So basically, basically, as far as I uh, understood, uh, based on my working as well as uh, uh, the knowledge uh, uh, which I have read through blogs, so for Linux machines, Ansible is the best. Yeah. Uh, for uh, other uh, uh, Windows, uh, you can use uh, uh, Puppet. Right. So yep. That's the uh, basic uh, stuff uh, uh, we are aware. Yep. Uh, Ranga, I think uh, you can utilize uh, uh, Ansible for all Linux machines. Okay. Yeah, all production servers are in Linux only, or I mean Unix flavor only, right? So I think yes, yeah. yes, because we are using Ansible for that uh, uh, purpose uh, alone, so it's easy to maintain as well. Right. Okay. okay. Is it, is one is more it, yeah, well, sorry. yeah, carry on, carry on, carry on. Easy to maintenance is like one of the things people go for the Ansible because you don't have to, you know, uh, say. When you talk about the Ansible versus Chef versus 
puppet uh, ansible has no database okay uh, so it stored everything in the configuration file uh, on top of that it is a agentless uh, it's a little bit easy because here you don't have to add any nodes and then run the uh, as stuff. So you just write an inventory file and everything you have in that. So that way it's good. Uh, also, it uh, has a uh, lots of role, community driven role. Uh, so which is very powerful actually. Uh, but most of the things apart from that I see uh, Chef and Puppet has it. So for example, Ansible has a open source version and also paid version whereas Chef also has an open source version uh, paid version uh, Puppet 2 has have the same model they do have a version and uh, open source model so uh, yes, this you have to separately you have to install agent for this and you have to install separately agent for this But again, I just said like the terminologies you might find different uh, Puppet is very strong towards Windows Chef is also kind of strong towards Windows uh, Ansible you can ex ex achieve all this thing, but Ansible is little bit weaker when it's compared to because Ansible uh, when you talk about Linux you can do through SSH but when you talk about the windows that's where that started you know showing the weakness so weakness so this kind of thing so again you can find out the lots of difference about the Ansible chef and puppet but yeah, in a in a way, most of the production servers you have in uh, Linux. And one more thing, like Ansible is de developed using Python. That is like inbuilt in any operating system, and you don't have to install it. But whereas Chef and Puppet both has been developed using Ruby, which you won't get it by default. So that's one of the reasons. Okay. Yeah, yeah, got it. Thank you. And uh, so in the essentials video, so I think uh, uh, I was not fully getting uh, that concept of patching. Uh, say, for example, uh, uh, I am installing an application. Uh, application, say, for example, it is a, a, a Java 6.7 or something. Uh, uh, when when I need to install uh, upgrade that application to Java 8 so how do how do the process uh, goes on with respect to Ansible okay so when you say upgrade then uh, let me tell you uh, we have Ansible Let me convert that what exactly I'm discussing right now. We have a playbook, okay? Inside the playbook, we have a play. And inside the each play, we have a module. Okay? Now, when you ask me, okay, what I do with the upgrade process, so I will tell you which module you are using because the behavior of each modules are different. Let's say you are using Ansible YUM module. Okay, so here I'm just talking about the YUM module, which is this one. YUM module has multiple. Just a second. Let me open up. Now, if you look at that, YUM modules has multiple uh, parameters and uh, one of the parameter which if you can look at it state okay and here yum has these many things absent installed latest present and removed so here if you are using for installing that uh, jdk8 and here you can see there is no as such upgrades are there okay 
so you will not be able to use it but yeah there is, there is some module in which you have uh, upgrade something then you can use it depends on the state okay now what you can do using the playbook module uh, using the yum module you can first remove the older one okay and then install the new one that is you can do that so yes uh, we can do that uh, but uh, there will be a, a interval time right uh, between uh, removal and uh, uh, newly installed the latest version so during that time so the data in that application or uh, something uh, there might be chance of uh, corruption isn't it or uh, how do we overcome that okay so what you are saying like during the upgrade process it should not yeah. be uh, your application should not get disturbed is that correct? yes yes correct yes correct so, exactly yeah so what i would suggest uh, listen uh, you are talking about a very simple thing you, when you say jv when you install jdk or java jre let's talk about it then it runs okay. and create a jvm java virtual machine fine now you are having the java virtual machine loaded in let's say 7 suddenly you want to change the jvm to 7.8 so any way you have to stop this application servers and stop it stop and start it so there is no way on the fly it will get migrated okay so i do not see this possibility is happening because you have to stop the application server with seven and you have to load with eight so that has to be done okay got it got it sorry now let's move on so i was talking about what is a a roles so let's move this question up here what is the rules now if you talk about the rules uh, i don't know how many of you have experience with other tools like puppet or chef in the chef we have one one thing which is called cookbook okay in puppet we have something called Manifest? No, module. Manifest is a kind of your playbook. Okay, so what exactly the cookbook and module is? And in Ansible, we have you. In Ansible, we have role so what exactly this is role this is role is all about. so roles is a way to package okay roles is a way to package your script okay where script is playbook plus all dependent file plus dependency on another roles and manage it all playbook all playbook okay so basically roles is a way to package your playbook along with all the dependent files and dependencies and other roles actually so that way you can manage the things properly okay so now where can you find where can you find a roles free okay so you can find the roles free at ansible forge this is the place you can find the uh, sorry ansible galaxy this is the place you can find the ants uh, rules free of part now you can see that
see galaxy is your hub for finding reusing sharing and civil content look at this here let's explore see what is there most starred that means the number of stars is given more to these many rules okay more watched these are the rules which got most of the watching most of the rules got downloaded from this one tag contributor newest and many more so basically here what you can do you can search the rules depends on your need and you have a lot of rules trust me more than uh, 15000 rules are there you can look at this yes, uh, tensible galaxy has more than 15000 rules these rules you can write it yourself also and you can use it the one which you can find it this is mostly driven by the community that means community have write, written these rules let's say one you want to uh, have a MySQL. Click on MySQL. Look at this here. This is the MySQL. Minimum stencil version is required. This. How to install rules? This is the command. Tax database. What exactly it will do? If you go to the read the dis description, readme is also there. Look at this here. This rule helps to install MySQL server across rhl and one to variant so if you want to install mysql server so do you have to write to your rules basically inside the rules you have a playbook so those are things you have to write it but here these rules can be used and you can get free script and you can use it and see this is the rules variable which has been this is the example to use rules how it can use the rules whereas rule name is mysql variable is this this and this so this is the way you can use it this is another way which has been used rules to passing the different different parameters so what i'm trying to say here a rule is a way to package your software and on top of it you get the uh, free rules by the community from the Ansible uh, Galaxy. And you can use those program in your automation without you writing and getting into the playbook stuff. So let me get a quick control, control server. So I need to have one. So role is, role is also a playbook, is it? Uh, rules has a playbook but also has many other skeleton and which I'm going to talk about now in some time just give me a few minutes okay because I, uh, I just want to understand the uh, whole structure of uh, ansible uh, scripting yeah oh, so yeah I will present some something to you so you will understand so you understand the playbooks and all right yes wonderful Playbook is uh, nothing but uh, just a YAML file which is having some modules in it, right? Right. Or maybe a collection of modules. Yeah. Yeah. So, play, play is a single module, correct? Yeah. yeah. So you have a playbook inside that you have a multiple play. Each play yeah. has a modules, right? Yeah. Each play you have a module. So what happens suddenly? Uh, you have to do separate this work. So this is one of the example. Look at this What you have in this image? You have a one playbook which is called WordPress Another playbook which is called MySQL Another playbook which is JBoss 
another pale blue which is a repository and server common and build so basically all this playbook you have it now there is a one thing you want to uh, run your only specific playbook and also you want to make a dependency so how do you do that so are you going to put it everything in one playbook let's see that this image in this all the logic you have kept in one playbook only and that is too much because if you see that this if you if you execute the playbook everything will get executed some over the period of time if you want to execute only some playbook which you want let's say part of it just like as aranga said he wants to upgrade only jdk so why he has to run all the playbook so you will not be able to do that because the, there is a playbook which has all the logic so in order to get this done in a in a in a precise way in in a to make this pro, uh, your program easier to manage you're going to convert this this playbook into the multiple rules so you have a large playbook slowly you're going to convert into the multiple rule so that's what as it has been done so now you had a playbook which has a three tasks okay now converted all these these different different tasks to different different role the one we call it builder another we call it server common and repo so instead of managing the such a complex playbook now you do the manage the different different roles and each roles has a playbook now what would be the skeleton of the role so skeleton of the roles will be something like this there will be one directory which will be called roles okay again i am reminding you there will be one directory which will be called roles inside that here if you have if you see the directory structure here you have three roles one is a builder another is server common and third one which is the last one which is a web server so under the roles directory which is a fixed you have a three different role now inside the role role directory such as builders or server common or web server what is the directory you will be having so you will be having a directory something like default files handlers meta tasks templates and variables now you need to know all this stuff what is a default what is a files what is a handler what is a meta what is a task what is a templates and what is a variable let's understand about the files so what is a files what is a files all these are directories again so what is a files directory will do so files directory you keep nothing but the respected files for example as ranga said he wants to install jdk 7 or 8 so where from where is going to take the file probably is going to take it from the url that is one way but also he can use it you can copy all the files of your ansible and keep it at the one directory which is called files directory so that way whatever the dependency of the uh, the rules which you have you keep it inside the files directory is that clear okay ask is very important under the, under the task directory will be having your playbook okay the playbook which you have written and convert it templates is nothing but the place where we'll be having a templates file this is just the organization remember earlier you used to have everything at one place a different different place now everything you are putting at one place with a certain guidelines so templates you can push it here all the now let me talk about defaults will be having the default variable again i'm reminding you default directory will be having all the defaults variable inside that uh, vars also you'll be having the any vars variable which you use for that particular role 
handlers will be having all the yaml file which will be only related to handler and meta will be having only the information about the name of the rules dependencies of the rules and blah blah things so it's very not very difficult to understand again under the rules directory you have a role under the role directory you have a some certain default directory which is, is includes defaults files handlers meta task templates each of these directory will be having main.yaml when i'm saying each of the directory will be having main.yaml vars will be having main.yaml which will contain the all the variable handler will be having one direct one file which is called main.yaml which will contain the, all the handler code but the the main code which sits inside the uh, uh, rules main code which is like a main playbook which sits inside the task main.yaml so in a simple way whenever you call rule task main.yaml will be called this main.yaml will have a handler so then handler directory will be run you will be having variables needed then vars main.yaml will be run but yes whenever you call the role task main.yaml has been run is that clear yeah can you show any example to to see the structure of this yeah we'll we'll go to get back to the demo okay okay yeah now here you see there is a there is a one directory task remember the task directory here you have a main.yaml so main.yaml has a content which is called they are including web servers.yaml and db server.yaml so that is also possible so now by default when you call the rules main.yaml will be called inside the task but main.yaml will call web servers and db servers that is also possible so basically how do you how do you call the all this uh, what is say uh, rules so rules is being called using the site.yaml which is there at the each role level so if you look at this here site.yaml which has a web servers and db servers so that is also possible so let me show you one example of it so i will go to the notes and sibyl here okay oh, just a second okay so now let's get started the demo so for that i need a machine so let's grab a machine first i am going to get one rh here two machines i needed one for remote one for control so That is a hard disk. Security. So I'll make it one is control server. Another one is remote server. I must write it down all this specification IP address here. this is a control server
IP address is this one. This is a remote server. IP address is this one. Now I'm going to log in using the control server. I don't have a password, I have a PPK. So I'm going to use it. Colors. 60. Is it to have a user? Pseudo happiness. Okay, so I have got this. Now, what I have to do, I have control server need and civil installation. So, let's get the and civil installation done. So, how can you install the and civil? How to install and civil? So, I have a steps already with me. I'm going to share with you. I think this is already covered as part of the introduction class. Where is that? Here it is. Okay, so now I'm going to run this after this you need a APL after that APL need to be installed after that you need to do update Sarichil Sun Uh, Rajesh, uh, when the installation is going on, I just want to check with you one uh, basic question. Uh, can you help me understand uh, uh, the how this Jenkins and uh, Ansible differs? Understand Jenkins is to automate uh, the deployment process, right? And uh, yeah, Jenkins is a GUI-based continuous integration tool. So basically, Jenkins can talk to uh, J through Jenkins. You can trigger the Ansible rules and playbooks So that is the one thing but uh, one of the things like when you talk about the Jenkins tower Sorry Ansible tower is something like a GUI for the Ansible So if you have a tower probably don't need a and a Jenkins for that Because using Jenkins through command line you can execute the rules and playbook that's there Actually, Jenkins will be an uh, interface uh, to execute your uh, Ansible scripts and other uh, scripts. Okay. So, as part of Ansible, Jenkins is a must, right? No, not at mm -hmm. uh, Not exactly. Uh, so, it's not a must. Okay. So whatever, uh, which means uh, put, putting it in other way, whatever Ansible, sorry, whatever Jenkins can, Jenkins can do, Ansible can also do the same plus uh, additional no, features. Can we say like that? No, let me clear this point. Jenkins is a different tool. Ansible is a different tool. Jenkins can help you to uh, automate your CI continuous integration process. Okay. So now you have to figure it out what is a continuous integration version. Ansible is basically only for the configuration management and deployment. So that is the one thing. 
so both is having different nature uh, deployment is a one part of the ci that is where you can use jenkins to do the deploy deployment uh, as part of the ci cd pipeline so you have to dig out more about this ci process and then jenkins mm -hmm. okay so now i got the installation done of update and then installing the ansible now ansible installations will be done in squick Here it is. So now I have got the, all the prerequisite. Now I go to cd slash opt directory. Okay. These are two scenario. First, first, how to download? How to download rules from Porch Galaxy? Okay, how to download the command is very simple select the, the one uh, rules which you wanted and type this one Okay, so this command is basically it will be used for downloading the rules. So let me do that now because my server is ready Okay, so clear the screen here it is I'm downloading the MySQL rules, which will help me to, you know, install the MySQL server. If you see that downloading rule MySQL owned by Benno Joy. So this guy has written a rule. Name of the rule is MySQL. Is downloading from where? Downloading from the GitHub. Extracting where? So default location of the rules is this one. Remember, if it is, if you don't want to copy in the default location, you can have it in your own location also. That's there. But all the time, default location for this is root dot ansible rules. This is where all of your rules will be installed. So now if you go to this directory, here there's one rules. Now you want to see that how the skeleton has been of the rules is being made. Remember the same thing: files, templates, task, handler. All these things will be their defaults. So basically, how can you see it? Tree, tree is not there. Let me install it. I install the tree tool. Okay, clear the screen and tree. See, look at the skeleton of this. This is the rule. Okay, but if you see that rules directories are there, if you go back a little bit, then the PPT which I was talking about. So here we have rules directory. Inside there is only one rule. Bench Ben and Joy MySQL. Inside that you have a defaults handler meta readme task template var defaults will be having the default variable vars will be having the variable depends on the platform which you want to use it templates will be having the template which you are using this is a main task task main dot yaml will be executed in real here meta will be having this is a information about roles which includes the name, dependencies and all. And any handler which you write here will be sent to handlers directory here. Simple, so there's not much of the complexity. So this is a way you manage the large program of your playbooks and keep it ready. So what I have done, if Sorry, you want what to- is the, what, is, what is the handler? Sorry, I forgot it. What is the handler? So handler is nothing but let's say you have a 10 modules, 10 tasks in your playbooks. Now something like this. The moment the template files get updated, uh, you want to do something like a 
apache restart or refresh or something like that only that you want it and only that condition is if this changed so that kind of situation you can create a handler so all the handler code will go into the handlers main.yaml normal code will be there in the main.yaml okay okay so now this is the rules so this is the rules the question is how can you use it so now if you go and use this simple thing you can use it using this so what you can do you can in this directory where you have a rules you can create one file which is called site file or in dot file or whatever it is so inside the rules directory you create one a site dot yaml file and inside that you write this one this is clear now host all rules which rule mysql rules so that will be called so that way you'll be having the all the stuff which you needed so now this is the way so now what i'm going to do this is the another rules but i want to create my own rules so how can you do that let's add this question how can i create my own rules so you can create your own rules also using the command which is called init so let me run it that command so if you want to create your own rules you have this command ansible galaxy in it here the username and the role name whichever you put it it should be offline mode others it will try to create a role inside the galaxy which you don't want actually so i just run and you see my roles is created under this directory rajesh you get the same skeleton now what you have to do all the variables will go here all the templates will go here all the test cases will go here all the tasks will go here meta handlers dot main is main dot yaml so let me modify main dot yaml here main dot yaml so what i do i just modify this file and add some code which is i'm having already so copy paste from here let me do something like can we do something uh, uh, which uses uh, cell scripting within ansible you want to call the cell scripting yeah so we can do both uh, both ansible scripting as well as calling cell cell, cell scripting uh, within ansible because uh, these are all the stuffs uh, which i am currently working on so if you do that uh, demo so uh, it will be very helpful for me so ansible module name of the module is script which will help you to execute the answer so if you look at this here this is all what is that some arguments on two three four so as part of this file if you want to give the argument to this then you have to give this one two three four this is a arguments dollar uh, one actually So this is the 
playbook. So let me have the one basic also. So playbook inside that HTTPD YAML. This is the basic one. Okay. So now what I do? This is the basic one. Here you are setting up the HTTPD server. So inside that you have a task, install HTTPD and start HTTPD. Let me add your task also. Here. Here. Now there is a file which will be some file. So you have to manually copy. So first you have to copy the file. So let me first copy the file. You need a copy task for it. Let me copy from directly here and simple copy module. So this will copy from the local machine to the remote machine. So now here and here there is some copy should be starting with the name here src should be having And uh, one more question, uh, Rajesh, sorry to interrupt. So in that, uh, the first module, uh, first task, uh, the starting the HTTP service, correct? So if you want, uh, say, for example, in Linux, uh, we'll be having a root user as well as uh, uh, some application user as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Non-root user. So if you want to start the service uh, for the non-root user, so what would be the change in command in Ansible? I'll, I'll first let me make it working this one. We'll check. Okay, okay. Okay. So this is the test.sh. This is it will go and copy into the temp directory mode 644. Now here it will execute the file which is from the EMP. And file name is test. .sh. Message. here so arguments is not needed I'll just see here it's, uh, some arguments is not needed so let's make it this is disabled okay let's do now this is a four task which you have. Now, let me see if everything is correct. For me it's correct. I'll just do one. 
I'll verify against first local host. Okay. So first local host and then I this one. So now that command is should be what should you should be uh, here uh, Rajesh dot role. So what I'm going to do I am going to call just okay. and Sybil playbook. Go here and let me create a one inventory. So the inventory is vi inventory local host. And now and Sybil hyphen playbook hyphen i inventory and the name of the playbook and it says authentication to host yes so this is the problem fail to connect local host as such i will For this local in the key file so let me do that waste here this is the key which I'm using so vi node dot em this is the one so now I have copied everything so vi inventory now username you have to give it So let's do this command. We have to do this. And now this one. Where is the key file user node.pm? Run it. There is an error from the detected file. That's genuine error. CH mode 600 node.pm. Clear the screen. Okay, so now installing the HTTPD. And there's a file which is missing actually. So it was missing, so this region I am creating. File. Now rerun. Okay, cool. Now you see that script has run it, and we have temp 
see inside that row just a second let me make it your program here your process so first you have to modify the source then sorry not this clear the screen now go to the opt here we i test dot sh just run one directory not very complicated and kdir src i it is supposed to create a directory src okay now go to the where you have created a rules where is the created rules i don't know where is the created okay ah, where is the rules created no you need to go for a cd opt directly c slash opt I think dot ansible cd dot ansible is ah, okay cd slash root dot ansible rules okay under the rajesh tasks here it is so everything is here now you run it this command one one more time so it's supposed to create one directory which is called src here now go pmp it's created a directory src where I'm creating, I don't know. Okay, let me check. And I'm going to hard code. What is this? This file is already exist, so it has created. So let me hard code this file. That's the better. Opt dot sh. It should create a file under the pmp directory. It's good. Okay. So now rerun this program. Okay. So your program is working. Now if you see pmp. You have got the src directory now this program yeah. i have a doubt rajesh yeah tell me so uh, what is that uh, uh, in the last line okay equal to five and change equal to two just a second i'll tell you Yeah, what is the question here? No, uh, after we ran the Ansible playbook command, right? So in the output we got, so it says uh, OK equal to 5 and uh, change equal to 2. OK, this is a call IDO, IDO points, IDO potent. That means uh, basically uh, here you have a total five tasks in your program. So okay. uh, five tasks, five modules out of which got changed to unreachable zero, fail zero. That is what. OK. OK, so now well, let's move on. We have to do it a little bit fast. So now what is the role? So now we have a roles which you have to call it. 
So now this role is ready. Now what I will do, I will copy this role. Uh, I will copy this role just a second. So I'll open up these roles and make it quickly possible. And simple role. So what I will do. Yeah, so I will copy this role inside the this file. Okay, so the file will be in this location. I have everything in place except invent. Uh, so let's move this one to the directory back. Okay, let's move this node.pm to the back. So now get back. Now we have this one inventory and a node. So inventory also go and node.pm also go back. So this is the location I copied everything. Remember, I I, I just I was testing my book, sorry, playbook. So I have to keep it here. So this is a role, this is the inventory, this is a node pm. This is where I have to create one file which is called site.yaml. Inside the site.yaml, I will keep direct and all this stuff which is called this one. So now let's make it. Yeah. What is that main dot uh, retry? Main dot retry will be having the nodes which you uh, run it. Look. Here you mean by the remote servers? Yeah. Remote servers. Inventory file which you run it, that will be having the retry. Now in this one. Yeah, this needed this is not needed okay so this is the role i'm calling my role you want to call another roles like let's say my sql you can insert the new command which is here but first i will make it running mine one okay so now i got this same this is the way you call the role roles what you have written remember that you have written roles which is called rajesh asks main dot yaml main dot yaml say this is the code you have written which is working and stuff like that so here you don't need the host specification basically uh, if you look at this the best way to look at that any role is look at the existing role so more uh, uh, more benjamin and then tasks tasks main dot yaml look at this this is the best way to look at that here you don't have a role specification oh, i mean sorry which one you want to execute um inventory specification so you just have a playbook so vi playbook you don't need this one actually okay that's all the remaining things will remain same now see uh, all the skeleton i have created I have my own role, suggest dot role. I have my site dot yaml. Now you have to call the any role which you want to call it. You have to specify in the site dot yaml. This is the way to do that. And then after that you call the site dot yaml. So site dot yaml will be called similar to what you had called that. In any playbook. I'm just going to here. Just command here. Replace with main.yaml with site.yaml and run it. There's a problem. What is this? Uh, okay, site.yaml. This seems to be some syntax error. Okay, so let me fix it. Best way to look at that any existing one. So 
also here you must be having some space here that's where I get I think uh, uh, near that role you have given some space the third line near the hyphen just a second I'll tell you how it can be and Sybil role example Spacing is a problem always. I hate that. So, yeah. So, let me copy this. This should be space. This is good. Post. Let me delete everything. And the role name is Rajesh. Dot. What is that? Role one. Role one. Okay. So here host will be local. Host. Local host. And I just copy it. Hopefully, it should work. Okay. Okay. Misspelled module name. Just a second. What is the error? I should read. Okay, this is the different error. Last time it was the different error. This time there is an error which is called uh, in this uh, role you have a main.yaml in that line number 2. There is a problem. Main.yaml line number 2. No extent directory in task. The often indicates misspelled module name or incorrect module path. The error appears to have been in this file. I don't think so. There's error. Let me check. Hmm. I just tested that module on oh, this playbook. It was working previously, correct? Now, after we change it to that site.yaml, it is not working. Just before modifying, let me look at that more Benjamin tasks. They have a name. Let's remove the tasks. This is okay. Run it. Okay, 
so that rule is not needed at this tool statement here this file exists that's okay that's a right error actually so rm-rf-stop okay so now my rule is ready and this is the way you create it now what we did we create use the different role we created our own, own role and this is where you yeah. now you want to use this benjamin but you can do very simple vi set site.yaml and then inside that you call the hyphen role and then this one that's all everything is done now you have to change the inventory you know that inventory free trial we having the only host information you have the host information so this is the way you can use the roles is that clear now yes so let me try to summarize uh, what we did uh, in a structured manner so correct me if i'm wrong so that uh, it will be uh, uh, good for us to understand yeah okay but i will do just yeah. so give me one second yeah we'll push this one to the ansible role exam template okay now create this repository get init get yum install get here clear the screen now get init get add dot get config config user of name Rajesh Kumar email is Rajesh CM Galaxy dot com and get commit have a name adding and last one is called git push and this here CM Galaxy Oh, yeah. Done. So now you have this rules here. The command which you're going to run it most of the time is in order to do that. This one. Okay, so now add readme file. Okay, yeah, tell me quickly. Tell me. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for roles, uh, we need to first uh, uh, use the uh, for creating our new role. We need to use that Ansible Galaxy command, mm -hmm. Ansible Galaxy init command, correct? So right. after that, after that, uh, to add a task, uh, we need to add a main.yaml file uh, inside the task folder. Yeah. So whatever task or whatever play we need to add, uh, we need to add in that. Hmm. And uh, after that, in inventory, so whatever machines or whatever host, we need to uh, uh, update or create uh, what uh, create the place. We need to add uh, those machine host in that inventory file. Yeah. And uh, for uh, for authenticating purpose, uh, if you use uh, password, you can use password. Otherwise, uh, uh, what we have done is uh, uh, we have made use of that private key, mm. uh, uh, the key and uh, which we have stored it in node.pm. 
Uh, and we moved it to the main folder uh, roles inside roles uh, folder. So we have moved that uh, uh, inventory file and node.pm uh, file. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, so we have also created a site.yaml file. Inside the site.yaml file, we are calling that uh, um, the role file, uh, which actually does the work. Correct? Yeah. 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 So. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Rajesh, and uh, you made this uh, understanding clearly. Yeah. Now let's move on to the tower quickly. I have 20, 30 minutes only. So uh, tower. So what is a tower? I got the machine here. So now this is a 4 GB. So what is a tower? It is Ansible tower. So Ansible tower is basically a GUI tool. Okay. GUI tool first thing so where you can manage your rules you can manage your inventory you can manage team access and to the infrastructure you can manage the organization you can manage the credentials which is very secure and all the stuff like that so a lot of things is done to ansible galaxy let me tell you it is a paid software it is not open source this is a paid software. So what you're going to do? You're going to install the Ansible Galaxy. For that, what are you going to do? I'm going to help you with the process. So let me quickly get the steps for that. It should be here. Yep. So now I'm going to get it Ansible Galaxy. So for that, I got a machine, which is this one. So I'm logging to this machine. Let me close this. Exit. Auth. Final dot ppk. System colors. Appearance. Sixteen. Apply. AC two hyphen user sudo hyphen s now first thing you have to install the ansible galaxy the question is how so now ansible tower sorry so first thing install the apl update the operating system install the ansible which is must This is a tower. IP address of the tower is same. Okay. Clean up is going on. So let me install and simple. So it should be done quickly. I'm just waiting for it. It's taking more time.
Oh, it's taking too much time. Hmm. Okay, then let's install the Ansible quickly. After that, let's install the WGET. Ansible installed. We have already installed Ansible, right? Why we are installing it again? I'm setting up the tower in the 4 GB RAM machine. That was 2 GB. Okay, okay, fine. So we are doing it in another machine. Okay, fine. Got it. I installed this package, which is Ansible Power Package. Download it quickly. I'm going to untar it. I'm going to inside this here. Five package you got last month. It was a four lazy actually. We got five. Okay, no problem. Now what you have to do set up dot sh. That's all. So set up dot sh will take ten minutes to run it, and then here make this. There's an error actually. What is error? It says okay. So I, must, I forgot actually. After that, you have to set these three passwords. So you have to go to the file which is called inventory file. Where is that? So vi inventory file. And inside that, set up the password, which is the admin password, database password, private password. So let me search it up quickly. And here, PG password. And one more password. Let's set this. What is PG and RabbitMQ? Just a second, let me set it up. Okay. PG is basically for the, whenever it send the package, they basically Encrypt it so that way it's safe. Admin password is that this one is a database password. Rabbit MQ is a queue manager. So if you want to use it, you can use it. All this description you can find in the same place here. This is a database. And this is a database. Is it queue manager? Is it something like Kafka, like a messaging server? Yeah, that's a messaging server. Uh, if you use it, then only you have to activate it. Basically, that password is not needed right now. I just failed it. And now it will turn tower. So It will be done. It will take uh, five minutes of time frame. So let me pause the recordings. Hello. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and uh, okay, so you can see that it took a while, but uh, installations gone pretty well. Okay, so now you're going to access a machine. So how can you access? You can access. Yeah, Rajesh, this, uh, in this AWS free tire, uh, this 4GB, is it allowed? No, it's not allowed. It's paid one, actually. Okay, so I have got that. So okay, okay. Got it. So if we try in 2GB, it may not uh, be, it may not, it will it fail or will it be slow only? It will take some time, actually. Okay. So default username is ADMIN, 
password which you set e a s s w r d and here it is now you have to request for the license that's the one problem here so you have to request for the license without that you can't proceed further so i'm just requesting them a license they will send via email so what feature you want so basically they have to free ansible tower trial enterprise feature up to the 10 nodes and a free ansible tower trial limited feature up to the uh, 10 nodes so whatever you want uh, so that is okay that so i think i have a license let me use it actually uh, because i don't know whether they will give it or not that's also a problem it's not there okay let's get it I should be getting email. So far, so I have not come. What you requested is enterprise. Okay, is it uh, open source? This this is not open source, right? What is it? And no, is it uh, available? No, this is the tower. Ansible tower is not uh, free one actually. Okay, so license file, which is I'm trying, which is here located at waste directory. The file name is this one. Open, I agree, submit. Okay, license it worked. Okay, so this is a GUI, and most of the GUI is like you know that. Yeah. One, one quick check, like you have uh, recorded, I mean you have resumed the recording? Yeah, I did, I did. Okay. So, here what you have, jobs. Jobs where you can have a schedule, jobs and stuff like that. Templates, this is a different templates. Inventories, I think you know that what I'm about. And projects, so this is what I'm going to use it. Yes, the more GUI you click, the more you learn. One of the typical flow I'm going to teach you now. So now, first thing, create an organization. Let me tell you, uh, you cannot create organization in the trial license because this is one organization which is already created. You can look at this. Organization is created default. So what do you, if you want to delete this, you can do that. Okay, it's not allowing to delete the default organization. You have to get another license for that. So it's okay. No problem So this is the organization the first thing whenever you set up a tower and get a valid license You should create organization The question is what is organization? Organization is very wide actually. Let's understand this uh, organization is nothing but a uh, department so for example Infosys is own company they have a multiple accounts they have Infosys account from eBay they have a Yahoo account they have a uh, let's say a semantic accounts so all these different different accounts these different different companies don't want uh, their servers to be visible their project and script to be visible to other projects so what sh they should do but at the same time, Ansible and uh, Infosys has a only one tower for that. So in that case, you create an organization and you can manage their own organization. So if you look at this, what can you manage? So if you look at precisely, you can manage the users, you can manage the inventories. Look at this users, inventories, job template, admin, projects, team. So basically everything will be having your own. So you don't have to depend on anyone else actually. 
so for any sake so that's the one thing um just a second guys give me one second so organization is like that so the each organization you create you'll be having your own set of users inventories job templates team projects and admin so that way you can separate it you don't have to have a too many tower for it just one tower will help you to manage the different organization their policies and other stuff okay so whenever you start using the tower you have to first create an organization okay that is done i have only one organization which i cannot create more than one because the license agreement will not allow that so if in the if you create any other organization okay say it's the license only permit single organization to exist so i knew that no problem so i have got the one organization already i don't need too many organization for the demo now you have to store the credentials so credentials is where you have to go to the again setting button and this is where i was now go to the credentials now credentials is nothing but where you can store n number of credentials uh, ssl certificate keys and all you can store it so i have only one credentials right now and that credential says ec2 hyphen user credentials which is a pm file right so it's a part of the which organization of course default i have only one what is the type of the organization so there is a amazon web services or exactly tower google insight machine or you have so many options look at this so you can store it but right now i'll go with a machine okay inventory has a machine so that's all show machine and then what is the username will be of course it's a uc2 user uh, i'm this is the simplest way now password i don't have i have a keys okay so now what to do i have to copy this key so waste directory where is the key final.pm remember during the execution i was copy i copied the same key so i am copying here now as phrase you have it you want to escalate it as a sudo whatever you want to do you can uh, do that and then store it save it the moment you store it you get the another key which is here so you had a one demo credentials now i got the ec2 also so second step you do is like a, you know setting up the credentials third step you do inventories so where do you set the inventories here so you have to set the inventory for your project i have only sorry one for your organization i have only one organization so nothing much to worry about so you can add the inventory using this one you can do that you can put the name of it all this thing it can be possible but uh, what i want this time i want to give you the inventory in a different way so i want to give you the inventory using this machine this command so for that what you have to do go to the place where you install the host machine and you go to the place where you have a uh, uh, dot root, dot root. Uh, dot slash root dot ansible under the rules don't have so i'll create inventory here in when tree okay and inside that i will type ip address this is the two ip address uh, one is this one one is this one so let's do that so first is this one i copy and another one is this one so i got the two machine here i just save it and if it is a large you see inventory is always not very simple it has the group wars uh, host wars you have variables a uh, behavior behavioral parameters all these things you have it you have a groups of group group all this thing you have it so how can you get that inventory so you have to get that inventory using that this command our manage you can in, input the inventory from the current location which is inventory which i have created just now here but it will store where to so demo inventory do you have a inventory here 
let me show you here do we have inventory here see this is created so I, what i will do i can use this one uh, or i can delete and create a new one but as of now it's created so let's use this one only remember the inventory has no host let me show you see there is no host right now only there is one host which is called local host so i am going to add this one to the demo inventory to add it you can see inventory imported completed now refresh okay now go to the host machine now you have a three host so all the changes will happen in the three host right so this is the three inventories you have got it now these three inventories you have got it so this is the third step which you are supposed to do so i created organization push the credentials create the inventory last one you have to create a project so create a project using what so create a project using some examples okay some examples so now if one of the projects which you see here this is the one of the playbook rules one of the rules actually okay look at this here rules blah 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 here you have it so this is one of the rules which you have it so now you can create a project so you in your project you will be having in your company you will be having lots of projects so i'm going to create one project this project let's say is for xyz project okay name of this description of it which is organization so of course default only and now what is the scm type so how do you want this project to be uh, imported so do you have this your playbooks at uh, uh, this this is skeleton you need it remember same as skeleton i had created if you remember okay so, so rules you have inside the rules you have a rules directory and then inventory is wrong you don't need it because you got this in database and you hello 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 world dot yaml which is calling uh, some of the things here so all these things is being called actually now so now i'm going to call this here using get you can call it manually also if you call it manually you have to copy at certain location uh, which is this location remember this location bar live aws so if you don't want to import it from the git which is a good practice if you want to do manual work then you can copy inside this and automatically it will detect it but right now let's go from the git only so i've got it from the git scm url i've given there's no password and all stuff like that is needed and create see so project is nothing but your uh your playbooks that's all so everything is done so now i got the project xyz after that once you get the project the next step what you have to do you have to create a template template this template is completely different from the your template which i was using in the yaml programming playbook programming and rules this project this template is basically nothing but select the inventory select the project and execute it this is called template here so now we have to create a job template so how can you create a job template here so let's create a template now select whatever you have configured so now this is a job one okay now description i have given i want to run it or check it i of course i want to run it and inventory so you have created inventory demo inventory has a three boxes project which is having xyz project and the playbook see the moment that you created a project here you got the playbook hello.yaml which is from here hello.yaml so if you uh, have more yaml you will get more yaml simple uh, if you manually copy you will show 5 10 20 projects here so there is no problem in it so hello.yaml you have only credentials of course easy to have a user which is this one which I already created and folks limits all these things I'll leave, leave it bobos word normal everything I'll leave it and then save it so my template is also done so everything is done last one which you have to do run and schedule the question is where to run and where to schedule the moment the places where you create the templates same place you can click this button this button to run it 
this button to schedule it so if you want to do the cron stuff then you have to schedule it but right now no mode you just have to run it so just click on it and automatically it's running the run the moment you click here the jobs tabs will be having that run okay click on jobs tab see here jobs tab i just run it so it got run here job one you want to check it out let's check it out the locks is a gui so the more you click the more you get it see that some of the error is coming here gathering the fact relax recap all this thing is says okay 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 so this is how you execute it that's all so this is called traverse so you have understood templates you have understood inventories you have understood projects and jobs which will be running here you see the jobs click on the jobs and learn each of these gui things what are the options you have it is that clear yes yes Rajesh. yeah so simple create a project organization add the credential create inventory create a project create a template run and schedule it that's all yes you have to get familiar with it you have a ldap setup also uh, you have a teams also some management related job like a backup archival and all stuff also so this is how and configuration of the tower you can do this through this way so these are the things which you have and you have to practice it any other questions no questions okay. so with this uh, tower i'm going to wrap it up wrap it up this session uh, this, uh, recordings to the devoschools.com and you can access it over there by tomorrow i'll send you an can we get that note notepads as well uh, this all this notepad is already available in the devos school class just let me show okay. you this this is the location everything is available so you just yeah. go and grab it these notes here okay let me push uh, one more time so there is a changes so which i have not uploaded so i'll push it after this stuff okay Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest want to study further subscribe to our paid membership to get a deep dive into each and every topic do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our devops school channel and hit the bell icon to learn more keep learning